Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great Wednesday. Uh, we got about three hours before I have the Dan Salio show. And we might have some interesting news on one Micah Parsons. Um, Dan is supposed to be getting back with me about he's talking with somebody exclusively about Micah Parsons, and it's good that we're actually having this conversation right now. Um, interestingly enough, Micah Parsons is a little bit pissed about his rating here. Pro Football Focus rating rates him as number three pass rusher uh, behind Miles Garrett and T.J. Watt. Um, so what happened is um, you had uh, Jeremy Fowler was talking about um, Micah Parsons with uh, an NFL executive. So um, while speaking to ESPN's Jeremy Fowler for his 10th annual uh, top 10 positional rankings, a veteran NFL coach praised Micah Parsons for how he exceeds in his role as an edge rusher who can attack from different spots on the field. Quote, if you put him at outside linebacker all game in the same traditional spot, I'm not sure he'll have the same production, the coach said. He needs to be moved around, in my opinion, but he is good in that role as he completely wrecks a game, which I have to kind of agree with him because the thing is, is he's undersized for being an edge rusher. He's about 245, 250, and when you're constantly going against guys that are 320 and 330 left tackles and things, you start to wear out, and wear out, and this is one of the problems that you have with Micah Parsons down the stretches being battered and bruised and doubled and triple teamed and everything else, he just gets worn out. So Parsons lands number three in this year's rankings, like you said, between Miles Garrett and TJ Watt. Um, he took the social media because he was kind of pissed. Um, they were basically saying in their ratings that he took on 167 double teams. 167 double teams. You're going to tell me that, that he had single that we had single people on him, you know, that many times? Come on now. So Micah says, there's no way it was only 167 double teams, more like 500. MFers can't F with me, man. It's up this year on Mamas. Two weeks. Two weeks, he's ready to go. So as Brandon Lore uh, posted, Micah Parsons, you know, he, and he's talking about this and thinking about how is this, this is kind of crazy. Cowboys Micah Parsons ranked as high as number one pass rusher in the NFL and averages out to number three ahead of the season. Whoever ranked him as number seven is bonkers. Okay, so here's the exact uh, what they put in here for pro football focus Dallas playoff woes can't overshower the greatness of Parson who produces through schematic challenges and positional transition once a hybrid off the ball linebacker Parsons is now considered a pure pass rusher even though most of his peers are bigger than the six foot three 245 frame he fought through that and kept beating tackles off the line Parkins Parsons and Hall of Famer Reggie White are the only two players in the NFL history with at least 13 sacks in each of the first three seasons. And last year, he, cre he had a career high of 14 sacks despite facing 167 double teams, most among edge rushers. His 35.3% pass rush win rate is nearly 5% points higher than anyone else. Unreal athleticism for the position, twitch, speed, and bend is phenomenal, NFL coordinator said. His issues are really more in the run game than anything else where he has to take on heavy stuff. That's where you feel the lack of size a bit. Yeah, and that's the thing. If you've got a 320 or 330-pound tackle who's drive blocking you and you're 245, bro, you know, for me, and I can say – you know, I know people are going to say, oh, here we go again with some more Mark Holmes bullshit. But here's the thing. I played nose at JMU, okay? I was th uh, 220 pounds, 220 pounds. Now, this is, again, you know, back in the 80s where there were very few 300-pound players, like Dave Butts was the first one. So people weren't as big, but they were still a lot bigger than I was. 
the thing was for me, what worked well was I had speed. I could do a jab step, get the center to step with me and dip and rip coming back across his face and was quick enough to get past him. Boom. You know, Steve Ham was about 255, 260. And if it was going to be a double team and they're drive blocking me, bro, I'm back there with the safety. I'm getting launched at 220 on a double team. But if you let me go ahead and use my speed, zip, boom, boom, I'm gone. And that's Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons is undersized. So if you're saying he's got to drop the anchor and hold the line, when you got a 330-pound tackle that's pushing you, sorry, the speed's not helping you on that one. It's got to be, in the run game, it's got to be a gap that I have to be responsible for, and I've got to get there right now. And that's where your offensive tackle, he's getting into you, and the running back is reading his ass. Okay, now, now pause, pause. And by that I mean is what the running back is doing is, if it's an outside run, he's looking and seeing where is the tackle's butt. If the tackle's butt's wide, I'm going off of it wide. If the tackle's butt's facing inside like this, I'm going inside because he's got that man in front of him. And so that's the problem is now Micah is having to hold that spot, figure out where the running back's going, and possibly have to fight around the guy's face and this is where that weight and that size and that strength come into handy so yes micah parsons is a phenomenal player but the best thing you can do with him as a weapon is by being able for him to use his speed in different locations and this is where i keep saying that i'm worried about mozzie um smith being able to hold the middle if you have a couple of stud tackles that are in the middle that can tow the line, then you can ultimately use Micah Parsons and so many different things where you're using a speed where your responsibility is getting your ass up field to make sure that nothing gets outside of you and that you are a heat-seeking missile on the quarterback because now the big guys are able to push the line forward. You follow me? Because the problem is if your tackles stink, and they get pushed off the ball, and you're working upfield, you're leaving big gaps for people to run. If your defensive front can step forward, reestablish that line of scrimmage back a yard, that means you're closing this down and you're giving less, uh, less lanes for them to run. So it's a matter of Micah is great on his own, but he is not good enough by himself to be the complete game changer. And this is where teams have learned how they're a great running team to scheme against them. All right, good people. I've got to go out here and do a few things, but we'll be back for our 3.30 live stream with Dan Salio. Maybe some more news on Micah.